Welcome to Woodlarn Tracking. Today I'm going to talk to you about friendly fire. And it's important to get some training in friendly fire because it's easy to do. It can desecrate your group. Um, and it seems like it happens a lot. Because in my experience, there's two things when you take untrained troops or even sometimes trained troops out in the bush. You always have radio problems and some friendlies are always shooting at another friendly. So I'm gonna share, share with you today some things that, that can help avoid friendly fire. Or if you follow these practices, just, it can help. And these are the basics. I have a lot more, but we'll go into the basics today. First thing is, we do not like the lumberjack scenario with your rifle. Try to mow down the woods by shooting fast and laying down on this fire. It, you need to identify what you're shooting at and you make your shots count. Just shooting through the woods, through the bush, doesn't have very good effectiveness because the bullets bounce off, like Rick would say. You get jumpy, you get to all the other guys jumpy. I can go on and on about all the bad things about it to just shot spraying and praying, especially in a pale military combat tracking scenario. Um, so, make sure you know what you're shooting at and identify it and make your shots count when you have to shoot. Put your shots on target and shoot well. If you are in some type of compound patrol base, let's say a homestead, we'll go into it some other day about how you should defend your homestead. It's tough to do without a lot of men and you don't want to become the Alamo, but we'll do a video on that in the future. But if you're going to do that and you have men there, you always need to set up challenge and passwords. Um, and let anybody know what the challenge and passwords are. So also, you need to set up a password that is like a multi password that everybody can yell if they are being pursued, they're lost, they're confused, so nobody shoots them if they're coming in a wrong route. You need to mark the routes that you want everybody to come in and go out of your compound base, whatever, and, and make sure everybody knows the routes. Next is you always need to know where you're at and if there's enemy friendlies or friendly teams or possible civilians that can be moving through your area, where they are at. Um, so we have a thing that we do a lot here at Woodline, it's called a map check. It basically gives you eight or ten days of grid to HQ, to another group, where for our the other team knowing you did your eight digit grid or 10 digit grid, whatever you're using. And we'll go into a video on that, maybe the land app section in the future. But you always need to know where you're at and if there's another team, where they're at, and keep on communicating back and forth where you guys are at in this area of operations so you do not shoot your other team or shoot at your other team. Very important. Um, and be accurate because again, if you give the wrong digits, they might think you're over here and you're really over here and I've, it could end up battery. Also, at nighttime, the men tend to get jumpy. It's tough at night because everybody gets jumpy. It's hard to identify what you're shooting at. Um, again, if you have entry and exit routes, have your base compound, make sure you mark that so everybody knows where that's at. Make sure you have challenge and passwords. Make sure you have a multi-password. Another thing, if you're running night vision, MVGs, make sure you have some type of pattern to signal a friendly, and a friendly can signal back. Like what we used to do was we would take our PBS 14s and you can signal the infrared light on and off, and we would go like two or three flasks so you can be answered by two or three longs and you know if that's friendly or not. We also use, you can use your D-ball, but that's a lot more light than just the little thing, infrared light on your night vision, PBS-14. Also, if you're not worried about the m and &E having night vision, you can mark yourselves with infrared markers, lights, so you know your team members Again, you got to weigh all of this if you go up against night vision or, you, or if you think there wants to have night vision. We'll do a video on night vision and night ops sometime in the future. We offer classes on that. Um, so, 
make sure you prepare it at night because these people get, tend to get real jumpy. Another thing, you want to try to mark yourself some way that any friendly will recognize that this is another friendly. Example, we always used to put some type of camouflage netting on our boonie hats that if you saw this type of pattern netting, you know it was a friendly besides giving us good camouflage. Last week, I cannot emphasize enough on not blowing down the woods. Identify what you are shooting at. Make your shots count. Even if you're being shot at, make sure you identify what you're shooting back at. Because that could be a friendly, somebody confused, a neighbor, whatever. And you don't want to shoot them or get in a foul fight with them. Again, if you have passwords, you can start yelling it out too. Um, another thing to consider is if you use good formats and good tactics and good camouflage, you probably the one do the shooting, not being sought at. Keep that in mind for whatever it is worth. Then lastly, remember you're the only one that can prevent friendly fire. Thank you for watching. Time may go on, but your life may not.